The City of Long Beach, Department of Health and Human Services, CHDP program presents vision screening in children, a training for CHDP providers. By the end of this training, participants will have a basic knowledge of the importance of this screening, become aware of eye problems that affect vision, have knowledge of proper screening procedures for vision testing, and know the proper action, referral, and follow-up with problems that are found. Approximately 1 in 20 preschool and 1 in 4 school-age children have some kind of vision problem. In 2008, a National Health Interview Survey found that only 60% of children age 5 and younger had ever had their vision screened. It is a national health objective to increase the proportion of preschool children aged 5 years and under who receive regular vision screening to 44% by the year 2020. The fact is, 80% of all learning is through vision, so when vision becomes impaired, a child's learning may also be significantly impacted. Difficulties learning can easily lead to problems in school. Undetected or untreated vision problems can also affect a child's ability to participate fully in sports and other activities. They can contribute to developmental delays, personality changes, and low self-esteem. Left untreated, certain vision problems can also lead to permanent vision loss or blindness. Untreated eye diseases, such as retinoblastoma, may even result in death. Young children do not realize when they are not seeing properly. Since they have seen this way all or most of their lives, they do not realize that they have poor vision. Children with a vision deficit are usually unaware of problems, since pain, discomfort, or other external signs are often missing. Many serious eye problems during a child's early development are not cosmetically obvious. If nothing looks wrong with their child's eyes, why would a parent worry about their child's vision? While a visual screening is not a substitute for a complete medical eye examination, it is an important tool used to identify those children that may need further evaluation or treatment. Early detection and intervention are keys to success. They can change a child's sight and their life. Pediatric vision screening should begin in the newborn period and continue throughout childhood. The CHDP program requires providers to examine eyes and screen the vision of every child at every well-child visit. Beginning in the newborn period, the healthcare practitioner is responsible for performing eye and vision screening. The American Academy of Ophthalmology has an informative 40-minute e-video posted on their website for healthcare practitioners on techniques on screening children ages birth to five years of age. It covers red reflex testing, corneal light reflex testing, Bruckner testing, cover testing, and signs of strabismus, amblyopia, retinoblastoma, and childhood cataract. More information on this e-video can be found in your CHDP provider information notice, which has been included in your vision training packet. An eye problem may be apparent even before any formal vision screening or examination is performed. One outward sign of an eye problem is an abnormal head position, which is an attempt to compensate for the child's visual deficit. Is the child's head constantly tilted to one side or the other? Is the chin up or down? Is his face turned to one side? Or is there a combination of head tilt, face turn, or chin position? Please note, an abnormal head posture may become more obvious as you check from a distance. Issues with alignment, also known as strabismus, is another outward sign of an eye problem. Does the child have an inward, upward, outward, or downward turning of one or both eyes? This is an example of ptosis, a condition in which the eyelid droops due to a weakened lid muscle. Because vision may be obstructed, these children often elevate their chins in an attempt to improve vision. Nystagmus is another outward sign of an eye problem. It is characterized by uncontrolled rhythmic movement of the eyes with resulting poor vision. A child with nystagmus may also have an abnormal head position. Here is an example of conjunctivitis, also known as pink eye, which is an inflammation of the conjunctiva, the clear, thin tissue that lies over the white part of the eye and lines the eyelid. It is caused by viruses, bacteria, irritants, and allergens. 
please note that the vision screening result of a child with conjunctivitis may not be accurate and a rescreen may be necessary after the condition has resolved. Other outward signs to look for include unequal pupil size and thrusting the head forward. Observe the child for other outward signs of eye problems, such as frequent rubbing one eye, shutting or covering one eye, squinting eyes to see better, red or watery eyes, or excessive blinking. After your child reaches three years of age, vision can be assessed by using an eye chart. This is usually performed by a medical assistant or a nurse. It is important to acknowledge the purpose and limitations of vision screening using an eye chart. The purpose is to identify children who have eye or vision problems that require further evaluation and care. It cannot be used to diagnose. Vision is more than just good eyesight or 20-20 acuity. It also involves elements such as color distinction, eye staying on target, and both eyes working in a synchronized fashion, which cannot be evaluated through the use of an eye chart. The American Optometric Association recommends a thorough optometric eye exam by age three. In order to complete the vision screening, the screener must have all the necessary equipment. This includes an age-appropriate eye chart, an occluder, and a suitable screening area. First, the eye chart. There are several different types of eye charts available for use. This is an example of the kindergarten eye chart, also known as the kinder or symbols chart. It is intended for the pre-literate child three to six years of age. The child must know their symbols and it is important for the medical assistant to go over the symbols with the child prior to starting the vision exam. Also, the chart must have a line that measures at 2040. The Snellen E chart, also known as the Tumbling E, is another option comparable to the Kinder chart. When using this chart, a child may use his hands or an E-shaped template to show which way the E points. This may prove to be hard for children with learning problems or those who have trouble judging direction. The Snellen E chart has been found to have lower testability rates. This is the standard Snellen letters chart. It is intended for children six years and older or for children who are able to recognize letters or read. Even still, it may be wise for the medical assistant to go over the letters with the child prior to starting the exam. In addition, the chart must have a line that measures 2040. Both 20 and 10 foot charts are available. If testing from the 20 foot mark, a 20 foot chart must be used. And if testing from the 10 foot mark, a 10 foot chart must be used. 10 foot charts have been found to have improved testability and may be preferred for the preschool aged child. The tumbling E, symbols, and Snell and letters charts are all available in the 10 foot chart format. Ordinarily, when using a 10 foot chart, you would document 10 over 10. However, when documenting on the PM160, please convert the 20 foot equivalent. Many charts have the equivalent listed on the chart itself. What does the fraction 2020 actually mean? The top number, or the numerator, is the number of feet away from the chart the person should be standing. The bottom number, the denominator, shows the size of the letter. In addition to an age-appropriate eye chart, you will need an occluder. Do not use the child's hands to cover their eye. The child may easily peek through her fingers or put undue pressure on the covered eye, which could affect the vision result. We recommend that you use a disposable occluder, such as a Dixie cup, tongue blades with back-to-back -back stickers, or fish-shaped templates. Discard after each patient use. If you are using a non-disposable occluder, be sure to clean after each patient use with alcohol. Vision screening should be performed in a suitable location, out of high traffic areas, and free from distractions. It must also have adequate lighting over the chart. The heel line must be marked at a 10 or 20 feet mark, depending on whether the screening chart is for the 10 or 20 foot distance. The heel line should be midline to the eye chart and marked on the floor, not on the wall. Some key points. The eye chart must be adjustable to the height of the child, 
with the eye level of the child at the 2040 line. Each eye is then screened separately, right eye first, then the left eye, then both eyes. A standardized routine, right, left, both, avoids confusion and facilitates recording. Be sure to record the smell and results at the time of the test. If a patient wears glasses or contact lenses, always test with them on and document this. Do an outer inspection of the eyes. Remember the ABCs of vision. A for appearance. Is there any redness or discharge? B for behavior. Tilting of the head, squinting, etc. And C for complaints, either from the patient or the parents. Number one, evaluate the literacy of the child to determine which chart to use. If the child wears glasses or contacts, perform the screening with the glasses or contacts on and be sure to document this. Number two, show the chart to the child close up, explaining the procedure in detail so that the child knows what is expected of them. Number three, Review the symbols or letters with the child to make certain that the child is familiar with them. Number four, adjust the appropriate eye chart with the referral line close to the child's eye level. This is about 35 to 40 inches from the floor for preschoolers. For three to five year olds, the eye level should be at the 2050 line or the 1025 line on the 10 foot chart. For six year olds and older, the eye level should be at the 2040 line or the 1020 line on the 10 foot chart. Number five, have the child place their heels on the 10 or 20 foot line, depending on which chart you're using. Number six, give the occluder to the parent or the child if they're old enough and have them practice placing it over the eye, demonstrating the correct placement. Be sure the child does not close the eye that is being covered as this will cause an inaccurate test when screening that eye. Number seven, you, the examiner, will stand by the chart. Number eight, always examine the right eye first by covering the left eye. Watch the child to make sure the left eye is completely covered by the occluder. Number nine, point to the letter or symbol that the child is to identify using either a pen or a pencil. Be careful not to touch or cover the figure. For three to five year olds, you will start at different lines depending on the chart you are using. For the Snellen and Kinder charts, start at the 2040 line. For the Tumbling E chart, you will start at the 2030 line. And if you are using a 10 foot chart, you will start at the 1020 line. For children six years and older, you will start at the 2030 line or at the 1015 line on a 10 foot chart. Number 10, when a child responds, it is very important to acknowledge their efforts with words such as good or right each time, even if the child is incorrect. Make it like a game and keep the mood positive and fun. Never show anxiety or concern because this may cause the child to become anxious or concerned. If, for example, you're using the tumbling E chart and you are unsure of which direction their E is pointing, you can say something like, I'm not sure which way you mean, or can you show me again? This usually improves the direction of the point. Number 11. In order to pass a line, the child must correctly identify one more than half the figures on the line without squinting. On most charts, this is four out of six figures. If the first four figures are correctly identified, you can safely assume that the others can also be identified. In an effort to save time and keep the child's attention, quickly move down the chart to the next line. If the child fails on any critical line, repeat the line in reverse order. If the child is unable to pass the line where you begin, quickly move up, showing larger figures as necessary until they are able to pass. Then try moving down the chart again to determine acuity. <laughs>